In this video, I will be showing you the process of building my new rack mounted Quiet Home server. I will be mainly using it as a file and backup server while also running some lightweight Docker containers. The components are chosen in a way that upgrading, for example, to a more powerful CPU, SSD cache, or even more hard drives is easily possible in the future, should my performance needs grow. You will find a price and component list at the end of the video. I'm using the 2U2098SK from Intertech to house all of the components. It is a rack mounted 2U server case, comes with dust filters and has room for a full size Blu-ray drive in the front. It also has two 60mm fans included, though I will be swapping those out for some quieter ones later on. I'm amazed by the build quality as most of the components are made out of metal and feel pretty premium. Only the two switches in the front of the case are sitting terribly loose and give a really cheap impression. While fitting a standard micro ATX mainboard in the case isn't a problem, due to its limited height fitting an ATX power supply isn't possible. As for the mainboard though, just install the backplate as you would with every other PC case and screw in a couple of mounting screws for the mainboard size you are using. For the build I'm using the MSI B450M Malta Max, which has two onboard expansion slots for M.2 SSDs and four SATA connectors. I'm using it with 16GB of Corsair memory and the cheapest AMD Ryzen CPU I could find on eBay. The CPU performance is enough for my needs at the moment and since the processor has an AM4 socket, I can just upgrade to a faster one later on. The build is not going to use the standard AMD CPU cooler, but rather a low profile cooler that fits the case. I first removed the standard fan mounts and afterwards inserted the CPU. I was always wondering who uses the scraper that comes with most thermal paste and gave it a try. Temperatures are fine and only the process of spreading the thermal paste is a bit more annoying compared to just applying it onto the CPU and letting the cooler spread it. To keep the CPU cool, I'm using a Noctua NH-L9A AM4 low profile cooler that is also very quiet. To mount it I turned the mainboard around, placed the cooler underneath and inserted the screws in the holes. Tighten them in an alternating manner to evenly apply pressure to the CPU. Afterwards, the CPU fan header had to be connected to the mainboard and the CPU assembly was done. Finally, insert the memory. According to my mainboard's manual, the slots to use when only two modules are used are number 2 and 4. I then inserted the mainboard into the case and screwed it in place. To replace the two 60mm fans that come standard with the case, the two HDD cages had to be removed. This is easily done with 4 screws per cage and only requires a long enough screwdriver. The standard fans were only able to run full throttle and this is why they had to go. Usually for servers this would not be an issue, but since this is going to be a home server I am still concerned with the noise levels. Every fan was held in place with 4 screws, which are accessible from the case's front. The replacement fans I am using are Noctua NF-A625 4-pin PWM fans, which can be controlled by the mainboard's fan headers and can run very quiet. To reduce vibrations on the server, the Noctua fans are not held in place with the same screws as the standard fans, but rather with some rubber mounts. Sticking those into the server's front plane was a bit fiddly, but worth the effort. Even though 60mm fans are usually pretty loud, the Noctua fans do a great job in keeping the volume down. I am using this Be Quiet TFX Power 3 PSU with 300 watts output power. To fit a TFX form factor PSU into the server, I modeled and 3D printed this adapter from ATX to TFX PSU mounts. Usually 2U server PSUs are rather loud and this is why I decided to go with this silent one from Be Quiet. I am not quite sure why the server case has mounting holes for an ATX power supply. While the height of an ATX power supply would fit into the server perfectly, the air intake of most of those power supplies is on top, meaning it would be blocked by the server's cover. But since this TFX PSU has enough power, even if I decide to upgrade a few components, I got away without using a noisy server PSU. This is the progress of the build so far. The mainboard is assembled and already in place, as well are the fans and the PSU. What's still missing is the hard drives, the Blu-ray drive and a bit of cable management. I got this Blu-ray reader from eBay and it will only be used to back up some of my Blu-rays. The server chassis has a 5.25 inch expansion slot. And after removing the front cover of that, the Blu-ray drive could be screwed in place. On top of this tray, there is still another expansion slot for card readers or front-facing USB 3 connector, which I might add sometime in the future. For one data drive and unweights parity disk, I'm using two 6TB Western Digital Red Plus drives. 
I mounted them in the server drive cages, which I took out earlier in order to swap the case fans. Unfortunately, the cases do not have rubber mounts, which would help in isolating the drive's vibrations. I then put the drive cages and the Blu-ray drive back into the server and screwed everything in place. I know what they say about the dangers of using Molex to SATA adapters, but since the ones I use don't have cables molded into the adapters themselves, they should be fine. Find the link to another video in the video description to learn more about the dangerous kind of Molex to SATA adapters. The mainboard has an 8-pin CPU power connector, while the power supply only has a 4-pin connector. To still be able to power the CPU, I'm using this splitter that just splits the 2x2 pins of the PSU into 2x4 pins needed by the mainboard. As the CPU I selected is not really power hungry, using this adapter works fine. However, when using a high-end CPU with more power needs, one maybe needs to select a different PSU. Since my weak CPU doesn't come with integrated graphics, I'm using this old NVIDIA GeForce 210 to adjust some BIOS settings and for the Android installation. And this already concludes the build of my new home server so far. But there's still room for improvements, for example faster networking or an SSD cache. Before installing Unraid, I changed some settings in the mainboard's BIOS. I want the server to automatically boot after a power loss and I also enabled wake up by PCIe devices to allow wake on LAN. I also enabled virtualization support in case I want to run some lightweight virtual machine. I also changed the setting to prevent the CPU from entering higher C states, thus not allowing it to enter sleep mode because the server wouldn't wake up again and had to be hard rebooted. Thank you for watching the video. You can find additional information in the video description. The list of components and their cost is given at the end of the video. Especially by using a cheaper, non-rack mounted server case, the cost of the build could be lowered significantly. There are also lower priced options for fans on the PSU, which would be a little noisier but could also help save money when building a similar system.